Hey, welcome back to the Vinyl Village Garage. It's a balmy 48 degrees. I swear I hadn't opened up the garage door. Well, it's a bit of a heat wave. It's been like in the 17s, 15s, and really cold already, so it actually doesn't feel too awful bad out here. And I feel a little claustrophobic here in this little tiny two-car garage building these cars, and I just like working with the door open. Now, with that being said, of course, the goal here is a huge shop with all the tools and all the equipment would be fantastic, but I don't have all that. You don't have all that. So that's the reason I am doing this, to show you that you can still assemble these cars get good results do it all yourself in a small space yes it's not perfect it's not ideal but it can still make it happen that's the point of these videos show you some insight see a little bit of the behind the scenes things maybe you know so you understand what you're getting into and realize it's really not the end of the world to take care of some of this stuff now I understand we all have different skill sets, different levels, and some of you just enjoy watching me cut these things apart and put them back together. Because if you look here on the floor, right there, look what finally showed up, my rocker panel. I've been waiting very patiently for that component. Um, but long story short, it's finally here, but it didn't make it unscathed, but I think we're going to be okay. Let me show you why. Here's our convertible rocker panel in its entirety, but if you look at this leading edge here, I don't know how well it shows up on the camera, but this nasty crease here, a buckle here, a buckle there. This was folded over and folded completely over in the box when I got it shipped to me. Now, I didn't complain. I didn't get too wound up. I didn't want to try to dare send this thing back because who knows if I ever see it again because, on a long story short, we're going to cut all this off anyway. Um, so I'm not really worried about it, but if you were getting one for your car and you didn't want to do it like I'm doing, you want to replace the whole panel, I would probably consider this really not acceptable. You can see the pretty gnarly crease right there and buckle, but the only reason I bent it back is I need to measure from here to here as a point of reference to know where to cut it at to fit it in as my patch panel. So that had a little damage there, a little damage here on the bottom pinch wheel had a kink in it, but it's metal. We can work with metal. We can persuade it back into shape. So not the end of the world but it got damaged, but that's okay. We're gonna make it happen, make it work. We're gonna try to get it positioned here in the car. Now the front, I got this here to tie into. I'm gonna cut this off, I can butt weld all that. I'll probably tie a couple little straps on there, just add additional bracing. Then on my tow board here, we've already repaired, it ties in right here. So the front has all kinds of places to tie into. The back, well, not so much. There's no floor pan, there's nothing. Now we can tie into the inner quarter panel structure in here. And that'll give us going to the, you know, adjust the height and our distance. But I'm going to probably add some bracing from like the quarter panel down to the rocker panel because we trimmed out the bottom, you know, two, two and a half inches out of the bottom of this thing here. So I may tie some from here to the rocker panel just to give the car a little more structure. Now, they're not going to do a whole lot back here because it's nothing but rust. But because uh, I love fixing these rusty cars, you know. Um, some people say find a better core, find a better car. But let's be honest, who's going to fix these if I don't or you don't? These cars aren't trash. It does promote us challenges and they can be repaired, but I don't know, I guess I like buying them this way because I come to find out sometimes that you buy a better car and you end up doing all this stuff anyway because these things from the factory, unfortunately, just bare steel on the inside. They all rust. So um, nonetheless, stop gabbing. Let's get to cutting here. I'm gonna get this thing laid out where we gotta cut this thing off at. Let's get this thing test fitted into now, place. if you guys remember, this is my scratch pad. That says 15. That's my hieroglyphics if you guys can't read them. But that was basically saying from this leading edge here to the front edge of the rocker panel was right on the money at 15 inches. So from here to here is 15 inches. Well, we're gonna cut this thing somewhere in the middle approximately and get it cut out of the way but we need to make sure we cut the right amount off that's why i had to have this so i'm going to measure from here back to where i cut this panel off straight down is where it's cut at it's about seven inches i've already measured it so then we're going to measure from there to there then transfer that from here to here then do a straight perpendicular line straight up and cut this leading edge off then we'll have to do the same thing here on the inside figure the height we got to cut it at and we'll cut all this off because again i don't need it and it's also damaged so First things first, we'll get that measurement and transfer it. All right, well, here we go. This is what we have here. We're going to work with this corner here and measure it back to there, right at seven inches. So then we're going to do the same thing on this, mark it on here. Now, I used to have some of them daggum silver permanent markers, but uh, I seem to have misplaced and lost them. But I don't feel like going to the getting place to go get one. So we're going to use some masking tape to use as a line that we can cut from. And then I'm going to make it just a little bit big because it's easier to remove metal it is to add it back in there. Um, I need some kind of a line here to judge where I'm at. So I'll do it just under seven, like a 64th or a 32nd less than a seven inches. And I'm gonna cut that straight up. Now we gotta figure out the inside, and then we can cut that off and get rid of that damage part, and that should get us really close to fitting in where we need to be. All right, here's what it looks like here on the inside. It's a straight cut 
all the way across, pop it in just below that little circle, which is a nice point of reference. Then I come down about 30 degrees and I'll cut back into the line. Now this is the inner cowl. I've actually cleaned that up, wired brushed it. This is the uh, well through primer I like to use. And you'll see here, there's three holes drilled in that flange. I'm gonna try to weld down through here and I actually weld those plug welds back into place. I don't normally do that, but I like a new challenge, but I feel that's a lot stronger if I can get those to work. If not, I just kind of weld the outside edge here back into it. So that being done, I've got my transfer over here. I'm gonna get this cut off. Note the arrows, those are there for a reason. If you know why, hit me up in the comments, but uh, there's a carpenter here stuff going on, but I'm gonna slice it here, cut it off, get it ready to go. Okay, my other cut, and I'll come back here. That's that little hole's at. That's my point of reference to the bottom part of that hole. Uh, the six o'clock spot on that there, shoot over at about a 30 degree angle. And that should get us where it needs to be. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that trimmed off and let's see how bad we look. All right, got it all trimmed back, ready to go. Put it on the floor jack. If you've ever picked up these convertible rocker panels, they're a little bit heavy. Got the back prep just the same. We're gonna slide that up in there, hopefully, but I'm gonna use the jack and get it up into place. And then we'll get our measurements. This, this edge here needs to be 16 inches off the floor. And then also this front corner to here will also be 15 inches. That's what my notes here say. And I've got similar notes back there. Well, let's get this put up into place. That's actually pretty close. I might have goobered up that gap a little bit, but uh, we'll see how it goes. We'll do a little twist on here. I think it's got to go forward some, so that's going to help. But, you know, you know, my calibrated eye must have been just a little bit off. But that's okay. I know a guy. Um, we'll get this thing clamped into place and see where we're looking. Okay, now, as long as I got this right, my leading point was my measuring point. Hang the tape measure on that. Shoot right at 15 inches. Yeah, actually right there where it needs to be exactly. Happy with that. And then from here to the floor, what was I mark here? That's what my illustration is, my hieroglyphics. Top of that to the floor. Now this isn't my bubble level, just to the floor. 16 inches right on the corner. So that's good. Now, unfortunately, somebody, me, probably should have measured a little better. We got about a 3 8 inch gap at the back edge. Nice and tight at the front. So I might have goobered up a little bit, but that's okay. I can weld, this takes a little more time to weld, but maybe do a little more good or job of measuring. I probably wouldn't have to do that, but. I said we clamp that into place. This is pulled up pretty decent too, so I'm gonna be able to drop some welds into that and tie those two pieces together. I'll probably treat that with some uh, oh, some rust converter primer or something, put something on to keep it from rust. I'll get it welded first, and then I'll hit that with something. Then we still gotta put this piece on, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But let's go check out the back. All right, as for the back, straight down for the road jam, should be 19 and a quarter. Let's see how we're faring up. Straight down, right there at 19 and a quarter at the peak. And then the back corner should be at 20 inches. I'm not doing any better than that. So we're in the right height. That looks pretty good. Now the quarter panel, you see has a little wiggle room here. I'm gonna need to pull this in just a little bit. And I'll tighten it. And I can't do anything with this brace because the quarter panel goes in between this piece and the rocker panel. So I can't tie that back to it. So I'll have to go here to the inside of the inner structure, but I need to pull it in just a little bit, about an eighth inch, and then secure it. All right, we're looking pretty good. All right, I got everything kind of where I like it in position, but our layers are a little bit off. You can see this layer for the rocker is a little further back. Right, what I like to do when I'm doing my tacks is take a little screwdriver. It don't take much, but you can see it actually starts to move. So I'll pry this to the same level and do the same thing, put a little tack into place. The contortionist make us all work but we'll make it happen and now that will stay in position now we're the same height i'll keep working away here across the whole thing then we'll drop a couple screws through here and the front part should be in place good and finish test fitting everything okay now the rocker panel is just sort of tack welded into place a couple of tacks here in the front put some vice grips in the back uh, we're going to put the door back on the car so I can check my gap across the bottom of the rocker panel and then to the door jam and make sure everything's still lining up with my marks here. I'm gonna recheck my measure from here 
But here, I'm sure it's all good. But then, like I said, we did these little eighth inch pilot holes through the hinge. I'm gonna line it up exactly as it was before, before I took it off and make sure things looking where it needs to be before we permanently burn that in. And ta-da, TV Magic door is installed. Now we used our little pilot holes, eighth inch pilot holes I drilled before taking this apart. Stab your drill bit through there there and snug these hinges up. Now look at this, my door still lines up here with the front edge of that rocker panel like it's supposed to. That's looking real nice. The gap across the bottom is nice and even all the way to the back back there. So I think the elevation is good on the rocker panel. My door is still lining up here. Door gap is even top to bottom. We're not pie shaping in or out. So I'm gonna say here, quick visuals, this is all looking exactly as I want it to look before I burn this thing in permanently. The last thing I wanna check is, remember we made this mark here on the window frame, down to here. There's my chicken scratchers, 32 and a half inches. I'm gonna take the tape measure here and verify this is still the same. So make sure my windshield frame or cowling hasn't pitched forward or backwards. I don't think that it has because everything looks good, but one way to prove it, so we make that mark. We'll go ahead and drop the tape measure on this, make sure this is good. All right, here we be. So touch tape measure to that corner, touch it to this corner here. Right there at the top of that, wind, that door frame, 32 and a half, right on the exact same spot. So I've got a green light to go ahead and burn the whole front section in permanently. And in the back, I'm just gonna use a bunch of my screws to screw it to the panel for now, because just in case I need to move that around ever so slightly, but I think we're gonna be okay, looking really good. I'm gonna get the front taken care of here. All right, now here on the front, I made a little wedge-shaped piece of metal. I've actually welded on the other side, welded almost all the way through, looks nice, but you can see it wedges all the way into here. That's gonna take care of that little mess up that I made. So I'm gonna come through here now, we'll burn it in kind of heavy. I like a little bit of a gap because this is heavier gauge in your outside sheet metal. So I want the weld to fully penetrate, kind of like it did here. This is the weld, like I said, on the back side, and it's come all the way through to this side and filled in the gap completely. So. Uh, just keep that in mind when I'm doing it this way. Now I've got to weld this shut where someone got a little carried away with the cutoff wheel. That was me. So anyway, just gonna go ahead and do a nice butt weld, clear through all of this, fill in here. So I nicked it right there a little bit, fill that in. Then I'll come through here and like I did with the screws, three spot welds here, one on that, and that's gonna be attached. And I'm gonna try to get down inside there and do those little welds into this brace into that rocker panel. I think I can shoot one through here pretty easily. Um, so I'm gonna get those burned into place. I may go ahead and burn the outside here too, just because extra contact won't hurt a thing. Um, that's gonna do it for the front. Now on the back, what I've done, I went ahead and reinstalled this, but you can see my little screws, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I put this in and tied it to here because what's gonna have to happen when I go to do the rear floor pan and frame rails, I gotta move my jack stand over here to the rocker panel. So I wanted to give it some more structure. Now the downside is, is the floor pan. You see a little actual raised section here? It actually slides up underneath that. So I'm not 100% sure. I may have to either cut or manipulate. Normally in the past, I cut this bottom section off, put my floor pan in, then I weld this back in. So I may have to do the same thing because this side is still all attached. Um, a little nasty and greasy. This brace here being a convertible comes up underneath that. That's why it has that little indention. So I have to be able to weasel that up in behind there somehow, but that's, I'll figure that out here in a bit. But first things first, I'm gonna burn that in. And I say our rocker panel is test fitted and looking great. Welding all squared away and done. I got it all tied in, stitched in really good. Spot welded all through there. I like how that looks. I went ahead and sprayed some of my primer in. I should have got a video at first, but I was able to get in there and get all three of those little spot welds. But I went ahead and did some stitch welding on the outside. And even there on the inside, you can see them in there. So I've got spot welders one, two, and three. I was able to get them, but I just didn't really feel they penetrate like I wanted to. So I went ahead and stitched them in just the same. Uh, I'm going to work on getting this cut out. Use the old chunk of metal for a template. Right, y'all? Remember, always keep your old stuff. That's why. Lay it right on top. Trace it out. Cut that out. I'll work on getting that put in here. That will be that way taken care of. Then I have the outer cowling piece here that needs to be doctored up. Now, technically, I've got a couple of spot welds down here. See my three screws? Those will go pretty quick. And then my rocker panel is installed. I went ahead and welded it here to the outside where I seamed it together. Liking how that's looking. And we're going to work on pulling the rear floor pan out. That's going to be one of the things here that probably not necessarily video worthy. If I can finish taking it out, because now I have some structure to the car. But in order to do so, I need to move my jack stands. Now, if you remember right, my body mounts here, I have an adjustment here I made up to get the height right. So I'm going to move the jack stands to my rocker panels, but I need to keep them at the same height. So back to my numbers I have here written on the side, 19 and a quarter and 20. So as long as I get my jacks out here, I'm still the same height. 
won't affect anything of putting it back together. So I'll work on doing that stuff next because one of the things we're going to be doing here soon is putting in our brand new floor paint, which is all prepped and ready to go. So, but some behind the scenes things are going to take care of first. Do those things there. All right. So the way I see it, heavy lifting next episode, pick that bad boy up, shove it down in here where I'm standing inside of the Project Mockingbird. It's kind of cool to stand where you're not supposed to stand. It just kind of adds a little bit of fun of the adventure. Or that's what I like to say. And doing it here in a two-car garage, yes, it's cramped. Our space is limited. Yes, it gets messy out here. See, with my hands. That's part of doing this job, getting your hands dirty, having some fun. Um, it's just part of cutting apart a 50-year-old car. So those say that uh, maybe it's a little messy around here. Well, it is. I'm not going to lie, but it doesn't mean you stop pick up a broom once a while and clean up the mess. If I didn't, I'd have a huge pile of rust, but it's just part of the process. So uh, nonetheless, I'll get the camera, work on fishing that thing in here. A few little things I want to show you before dropping that in. I got a few things that, you know, it's one of those things I can't always remember until I'm back to that step. Well, these are important things you don't want to miss because, well, uh, yeah, you don't want to miss. That's where we're going to leave it just like that. So we lift that thing up, putting it in. I will grab the camera and I hope to see you guys then.